And what are your thoughts on, uh, speaking of more money in the system, what are your thoughts on inflation? A lot of people have said, oh, my, my, my rent's going to go up $1,000 yeah. a month. Yeah, so the inflation argument, the, the discussion is just, um, you know, you can, I could have that like for, for over an hour at least. <laughs> and there's, there's, there's so many different uh, aspects to it. And it, it's really, it's good for people to even think about this stuff to, to kind of work it through and all the different like variables. Um, but so the, primarily, the main thing is I, I think that people assume that when we're talking about giving money to everyone, that that money just comes out of nowhere. Like I just said, we're, we're creating it. Um, and they're thinking that we're creating the entire amount and therefore we're ballooning the money supply and therefore we're having more and more dollars chasing the same amount of goods mm -hmm. and services. So of course it's easy to think that prices would go up because most likely they would. But that's not the way that, that most UBI is, is designed around. Like most UBI is, is about a circulation of money that exists within the economy from those who aren't spending it to those who would spend it in which it goes back up to those who don't spend it and it goes back again to those who do spend it mm -hmm. you know we're, it's it's about creating like a a water cycle and um, mm -hmm. that doesn't naturally exist right now it's you have to close that loop so that you create that nice circulatory system so that that doesn't work that doesn't exist right now and it should so if people understand that that we're that we're transferring existing money and not ballooning the supply, then a lot more people are like, oh, well, that makes sense that we wouldn't see inflation. And on top of that, even those who understand that, it's like, well, okay, sure, but what's to stop someone from charging more? Mm -hmm. Like, let's say if you're a business owner and you know that everybody is getting an extra thousand dollars per month, so you're like, well, I think the cost of milk should be eight dollars now mm -hmm. instead of four dollars for a gallon. Like, okay. So people think that, that that makes sense. Like, sure, just charge more. Well, the thing is competition doesn't stop existing within a UBI model. So all it takes is someone to not do that. And mm -hmm. the, the, the customers are going to go to that business instead. And the business who thought it was a good idea to raise prices it could potentially go out of business. And so you see even this effect in, in Alaska where every year when the dividend is distributed, people actually like see a lot of sales. Like you, you see hmm. sales everywhere. Like, yeah. You don't have businesses going, oh my gosh, all this dividend money is out there. Let's grab that and let's do that by chart raising prices. They think, oh my gosh, there's all this money out there. Let's lower prices so we can get them into our store right. and spend stuff here. So it, it, when people think about like competition, they're like, okay, you know, that makes sense. Obviously, you can't really raise prices unless you're in an environment where you've got like, you know, price fixing and non-competition and stuff like that. So competition is a key factor. And I think also that competition increases with basic income. Like, like when I, I mentioned the Namibia and having like mm -hmm. the woman start up and start baking, I think you're going to have more small businesses competing against you know, existing businesses right now, thanks to a basic income, because I see over and over again that there are big entrepreneurship effects. That's another factor is competition. So another factor is production capacity. So right now we are nowhere near our production capacity in the US. We're, I think we're at about like 70% or so right now. So if more money gets into this and it could even be inflationary money. It could be printed money and it's just giving it to people. And as long as they are able to spend that in a way that we don't reach those production capacity limits, then there's no reason to raise prices. Like you, you only raise prices because the supply is insufficient to meet demand. When demand exceeds supply, that's when you've got to raise those prices. So that is a big factor of this as well. And also, it's interesting, too, where you can actually decrease prices by increasing demand. Because what happens is then suppliers are like, oh, there's a demand for this. I'm going to invest in this and make more. So like an example of this uh, I like using is, say, imagine a village where eggs are like a dollar a piece. It's like kind of a rare thing. Um, they're expensive. So all of a sudden a bunch of money comes in and you're thinking, oh, well, the price of eggs are going to go up, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, it turns out that a bunch of people actually, because they like eggs and want eggs and eggs are expensive, they buy chickens. So now everybody <laughs> buys all these chickens and everybody has all these eggs that they have for themselves and also they've got this big surplus. So then they start selling eggs. So then all of a sudden the market is flooded with eggs and of course 
the, the, they're all trying to get that dollar per egg, but you can't do that because there's such a big supply. So the cost goes down. And then now you've got like cheap eggs because there's a giant surplus of eggs. So that's where, where demand can increase supply, can lower prices. And another factor that can happen too is something that we call inferior goods. So this is something where people right now are buying things that they're only buying because they don't have enough money to buy like the better product, the, mm -hmm. the thing that would be more durable or last longer. So I, I experienced this myself when uh, I bought a couch like a, a few years ago from Walmart and we were you know, trying to figure out what we can spend and we had like a very strict limit and we're like, well, we just got to get like the, the, the cheap, you know, kind of Walmart couch. Mm -hmm. and it was like, it was really cheap. It was like $500 or something like that. It, it was a very affordable couch. It like lasted like one, it, like, <laughs> it, like, it was done. It, it died in like two years. And of course, couches are supposed to last longer than, than two yeah. years. And if you're buying a $500 couch every two years, that racks up. And yeah. so now you've found that you've spent like $5,000 on couches. You, know? yeah. Yeah. you could have spent like $1,600 you know, on, a, on a nice couch. So when people have more money, they're able to buy these goods that last longer. And you're, so you cut down on the supply of all this kind of crap that we're making. And that's even like a good argument too for like resource conservation. Like there, there's, we're, we're creating a bunch of stuff that's entirely unnecessary just because people actually can't afford like the more durable stuff that they can buy less of.